there's a sort of a rolling edge to science that people overlook. Let me explain how this works. The rolling edge of science works like this. There is usually some genius, radical, revolutionary scientist who thinks totally outside the box and outside the norms of all culture and all society. He's usually considered kind of weird and wacky and maybe even a little bit crazy by normal people because he thinks so outside of the box. But thanks to that, he makes some groundbreaking new discovery that recontextualizes the entire status quo of established science. Then what happens is that there's a, a battle that ensues as this idea is put forward. It's so radical and so threatening to people that people, of course, deny it and they attack this person. They attack him as being a nutcase, as being crazy or stupid or whatever. But eventually, that generation who denies it, it dies out. Slowly, over time, it dies out. And then a new generation is born who's more open-minded and they generally come to accept this new discovery. But this only happens after much battle. This is not a smooth process. Because this new worldview and new paradigm is seen as dangerous, crazy, and insane. Think, for example, of Charles Darwin when he proposed the theory of natural selection evolution. At that time, it was a crazy, insane, dangerous idea relative to the standards and culture of the time, which is kind of more religious. And this idea that, you know, man evolved from apes and so forth, this was very, uh, very much a no-no for people. They didn't like it. And they didn't accept it. The only way we move forward is people died and new generations were born who were not indoctrinated into those old ideas, but into the new ideas. So anyways, the old generations die off, the truth finally prevails, and a new generation is born with the new worldview. But, but there's a problem here. The new generation now just takes it as obvious, takes it for granted. The new generation thinks that evolution was obviously the true all the time. It was easy to, to develop this and, it, and that there was no problem. And the new generation now becomes dogmatic about this new paradigm, just like the old generation was about the old paradigm. And they use the new generation to deny the next new paradigm, new discoveries, new discoveries beyond evolution. They're going to deny those on the grounds that evolution is what's true. And this cycle continues over and over and over throughout all of human history, which with every generation dying off and the new generation being born and uh, taking things for granted, taking epistemology and metaphysics for granted, and nobody is acknowledging the meta structure of this entire thing. Everybody is taking the entire mechanism for granted. And so the problem just keeps repeating itself over and over and over again throughout human history. And we keep making the same stupid mistakes. Epistemic blunder after epistemic blunder. Metaphysical blunder after metaphysical blunder. Ignorance and dogma after ignorance and dogma. Ideology after ideology. The content of the dogma changes, but the structure is always more dogma. Dogma on top of dogma. Belief on top of belief. Authority on top of authority. The only thing that really changed between religion, the religious worldview, and the scientific worldview is simply that the content has changed. The mechanisms have largely all stayed the same. There have been many discoveries within science in the last hundred years that have completely undermined materialism and realism including discoveries from quantum mechanics, biology, general relativity, cosmology, chaos theory, logic, mathematics, philosophy of science. All of this has undermined classic modernist science. Postmodernism also has done that to some degree. But the myth of science persists because it takes a long time for culture to change. The majority of humans today still do not understand the lessons of quantum mechanics or general relativity or chaos theory or, for example, the works of Georg Cantor with multiple sets of infinities, infinity of infinities, or the works of uh, Kurt Gödel and his incompleteness theorems or Tarski's incompleteness theorems or um, uh, what postmodernism is. 99% of humans do not understand these things. Even many scientists don't understand these things. They might understand them superficially, but they, don't, they haven't fully contemplated the, 
epistemic and metaphysical significance of these things. Because oftentimes they just tell themselves there are none. There are no implications. There is no significance, but there is.